Mickey Devlin, Air United club captain, and you're watching Quill 18. It's been a while! It's been a while since we've played this, and it has been too, too, too long. Uh, our big franchise that we played uh, a bunch of, I think it was in Football Manager 17, um, and while we've done a couple of videos here and there, we haven't done a proper run through of it in a while, and uh, it is definitely, definitely time. We are here on Football Manager 2022, which came out just at the end of last year, um, so it is fairly fresh, and it's exciting to go and take a look at the changes. Yeah, baby! How's everyone doing today? Mm -hmm. Is this the F1 team of room? It is. So Motorsport Manager is over. We have completed our goals and everything like that. And uh, Emma Giacomozzi, which was a reserve driver in Football Manager, um, or sorry, Motorsport Manager, who won 100% of her races that she participated in the uh, in the um, uh, the World Championship Series. She did one race, won it, retired to become a foot soccer ball manager in Scotland, because that is the natural arc of one's life, I think, right? Win a car race, go coach some football. Mm -hmm. You're accepting that Emma was the real brains of the operation? Yeah, she was actually running the show behind the scenes. That Quill guy knew nothing about how to run things. But here she is over here. Um, the uh, her, her age is not quite exactly in line with what it was in Motorsport Manager, because I forgot that when we... Uh, we ended the run, we were in something like 2025 or something like that. But uh, she is an Italian born foot soccer ball manager. Uh, had to pick a city, decided to go with Rome. I don't know, could have maybe looked for something more interesting, but I was like, you know, statistically speaking, I guess that's probably the most likely pick. Um, she uh, is set up over here though with a secondary citizenship uh, uh, in Scotland. Uh, so she is, uh, she is, you know, properly, properly, naturalized, or I don't know what you would call it, um, in Scotland. She also speaks fluent French and Dutch, because I'm sure we're going to be recruiting a lot of players from Belgium. Unfortunately, Flemish wasn't available as a language, but Flemish is basically Dutch. Uh, and then there were slots for another language, so I, I made it so that she knows Spanish as well, just because, I don't know, she's mastering the Romance languages or something like that. I don't know. Man, I am so excited. What is this, crossover episode? Well, uh, Bacht. This is just part of the greater Quill Cinematic Universe, is what it is. Or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. So, we're going to be committing to at least a full season of Football Manager over here. Um, if if we're all into it, then maybe, maybe it'll turn into a, a bigger affair, like Motorsport Manager was, for now. One season, which is still going to take us quite some time to get through. Mm -hmm. The Quill Semenic universe gets weird around EU4. <laughs> Flemish is so nothing alike. Like, I mean, I, I realize, again, I was looking for it as a standalone language. It wasn't available. I think Dutch is probably the closest approximation of Flemish in here. Um, I don't know. I'd have to look at some of the Belgian players to see what languages they speak. That might, that might be indicative of something. But, I mean, maybe I missed it, but I don't think Flemish is in there. So it's like, close enough. It'll have to do. I don't know. Uh, Quill Semenetic Universe gets strange with most Paradox games. That is true. Gets even weirder at CK. I don't know. I think the Stellaris part of the Cinematic Universe might be the most bizarre. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, Flemish and Dutch is close. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if you can, like, understand. Because I think it's like... You know, like, there's a lot of, like, vowel pronunciations that are quite shifted in Flemish related to, uh, relevant to Dutch. Um, so I don't know how much the, the cross-understanding is there. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty close. It's pretty close. As close as we're going to get. Hashtag hire Monty. <laughs> uh, Belgian players would speak three languages minimum. That's if, if Belgium was real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where does War Fortress fit in QCU? I don't know. That's a little bit weird. Alt universe? Maybe it's just another planet. I think that's the best explanation. Is the warps just don't live on Earth? They're just another planet in the universe. That seems like the most reasonable thing. I mean, we have made dwarves as a race in Stellaris, so you know, I guess that would be the explanation over there. Any players named Marson? I don't know. Maybe we'll have to go looking for players with key names. That's not how we're. Yeah, we're not going to hire people based on stats. We're going to hire them based on their names and how well they fit into our lore. I had to spend about an hour fiddling with my green screen this morning to allow whites to show up and not be green screen. Now you'll notice when I put my arm up over here and I cast a shadow, you'll see a little tinge of green from the uh, the just lighting of the sh the shadow lighting. 
we're just gonna have to deal with it. It's gonna be, have to be okay. But at least I don't have sparkles all over my white outfit over here, because that was gonna be a problem. This is gonna be the Monday game for the foreseeable future, for, the, for at least one season of foot soccer ball over here. She hasn't won a race in 22. Yeah, I know, I'd forgotten about the time difference. So really it's three years in the future that she wins the race in F1, but I don't know. Timelines get weird. Even the MCU timelines get weird uh, with the five year time skip. Like all the current stuff in the MCU is actually from like, what, 2023 or something like that? Just, just because reasons. One excuse to wear that again on stream. I know. Now, it should be noted, this is the, uh, the illegal Air United crest over here uh, because it's shaped like a shield. It did run afoul some British uh, heraldry laws. Never mind that they've used this this logo for ages and ages. I do have a, a cap with the new Air United crest, which is basically the same except round now. But we're going to go with that classic look, especially since this is the only shirt I own. I don't know. Clearly, I'm going to have to go back to uh, Scotland to pick myself up in New Jersey. We'll see. Italian Scottish like to see this in real life. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of Italians living in Scotland and Scottish people living in Italy. I mean, for, for various definitions of plenty, but I'm sure there's there's some. All right, so here we are over here. So this is a brand new save, brand new start. It is currently the 28th of June in 2021, which is the default starting date for um, if you pick a Scottish team as your start, because it's like the the, the preseason, Scottish preseason um, date over here. Um, currently in the world, I think I can check add remove leagues. No, that's not, okay, it's not the same screen as when you set up the game over here. But what I've done is we are going to be simulating every European nation, their topmost team only. Except for uh, British leagues, I think I got them all. I think all the, the British things, um, including North Ireland, uh, and maybe I also threw in Ireland just because they're nearby. Republic of Ireland, uh, they get all, all the leagues are simulated. So yeah, Republic of Ireland, I think they have two total leagues in here. So I'm simulating all the leagues of 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 Britain and Ireland, and also Belgium because of course we have to, and everything else only the topmost league. I also have the database set a size set to small, which is not going to be that small because we are going to have a lot of players in here. Um, but we're going to check the whiskey and chocolate in just a second, I promise. Um, but the uh, the reason for setting the database size to small is it uh, doesn't create as many like extra sort of loosey-goosey free players or reserves or things like that. And that is actually quite good if you're playing a smaller team because the larger teams no America, no. No America, no South America, no Asia, no Africa. Just everything in the category of Europe, um, which on the other screen, which I guess would be here as well. Only everything in Europe has been added in. We can we can always change. We can always add more leagues and things. But the problem is the more leagues you add, the more it slows down. So it's like, I, I just decided this is just the system I'm going to use for this. Um, so really what we're looking for with all these other leagues, we're actually hoping to get offers on our players. As a small team, what we're going to try to do is try to develop a lot of young players with potential. And unfortunately, a lot of them aren't going to stick around that long because we're going to try to, to get them hired on by these bigger teams and make money that way, if at all possible. So that's sort of the setup uh, we're going for over here. Now, with the Brexit rules and everything in play, uh, that does limit some of the ability to uh, for players to move um, in and out of, of the ook. So maybe that strategy will work really well. Maybe it won't. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's the, uh, the game setup over here. I'm not playing with any mods or anything like that. Uh, let's... Uh, Actually, I want to go back over here to me. Did I show this screen? There's our look. We can change our look if we want. Um, I think this is just the default. I was like, yeah, you know, it's fine. I actually opened up Motorsport Manager and tried to look at like um, Emma's headshot, but they, have, they wear helmets and stuff, so you can't really tell. So there wasn't anything I could really base things on. Uh, so that's gonna be Emma over there. Um, attribute wise, I set up her stats thusly. You'll notice lots of 18s. I don't know why. Um, but uh, since we are a going to be in smaller leagues, we are definitely going to have to do some coaching. So I'm setting it up like I always do. We are going to be a very offensively minded coach, very attack centric. Uh, so we've got the attacking trait, tactical, technical. Uh, so we'll be quite good for teaching uh, aspects of offensive gameplay. Can she wear a helmet as a manager? That would be awesome. Yes, only attack. And then also the working with youngsters, uh, which I think in this game is defined as 23 and under, maybe under 23. I think 23 still counts as a youngster for these traits that deal. Oh, probably says it in tooltip. Um, oh, this is 18 and under. 
Okay, so they mean quite young, but I'm still hoping, now we're not gonna be necessarily the youth team coach, but I wanted to spend the points here because again, the idea is hopefully we can um, try to develop some young players with a lot of potential and then kind of flip them. Um, and one of the things you can do when you, um, when when a, team, a player gets transferred to another team, you can actually, as part of the deal, say, yeah, but their next resale, we're gonna get a portion of that. And apparently that's a good way to make tons and tons and tons of cash. Let's open up uh, Streamlabs over here so I can see what the whiskey and chocolate contributions are. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. mm mm, -mm. mm, -mm. Refresh faster, there we go. So we first we got Named Moose that came in a couple of minutes ago. Thank you very much, Named Moose. Emma probably had enough time between not racing to run a football team. Moose also often con combine jobs like that. Well, Moose are so um, so good at multitasking. It is really impressive, uh, especially considering they don't have opposable thumbs. It's really, really neat. Uh, Tristo Mundo, thank you as well. Hey, Quill, hope you're having a good start of a week. Yes. Uh, here's some puns to get the ball rolling. Why did the chicken get ejected from the game? For foul play. Why is Cinderella bad at soccer? Because her coach was a pumpkin. I think we can do better. I think we can do better. But thank you for getting the ball rolling. Uh, to get the ball rolling. Oh my God, even that was a pun. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. And we'll learn the mental stats. Um, determination, level of discipline, man management, and motivating are all traits that impact uh, your coaching. So that actually should make us, or sorry, impacts training. So it should also help us be a better trainer for the team because we're not going to have the budget to hire like a million coaches. So we're really going to have to be hands-on with some of the training. Um, in addition to that, determination is the trait that you use to negotiate things with the uh, the owners of the team. So if ever we want to expand some more facilities and things like that, um, you know, get a bigger budget. Budget, that sort of thing. Determination should help with that sort of thing. Um, level of discipline stops how often our whiny, annoying players come to us with some bullshit that they're eh, I'm not playing enough. Eh, I want to move to another team. Me, 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 me. Level of discipline should stop them from being such little babies about it. And then when they do come to us, uh, man management or people management, sorry, it used to be called man management. Um, people management here will uh, help us just make them be cool with it. It also might make them slightly less annoying when you actually praise them. It's so frustrating in this game, for some reason. Some player can go out and score five goals in one match, and then you'll praise the performance, and they'll be like, you what, mate? No, that's crazy. I was terrible. How dare you compliment me? Basically, Football Manager never compliment anyone ever. It never goes right. Um, but people management should help with at least some of that. Um, and motivating is when we give our speeches um, to the team talks and things. I don't know if that helps with press talks. It doesn't say anything about that. Um, but it will help to get them pumped up. So that's going to be quite good. Honestly, I do often foist the team talks and things like that. To, so team meetings are going to be important. We can't avoid that. The team talks before a match. Often I've been lazy and used my assistant manager to do it, but we've got such a good motivating stat. We'll really have to do it ourselves because it should be effective. We get some more contributions to the uh, Scottish Single Malt Whiskey Fund. Uh, DBMS, thank you very much. Happy New Year's! If you are looking for content for your program channel, I can recommend to check out a thing called Advent of a Code. It has nice puzzles to solve. I will open a tab for that right now. Thank you very much. Uh, and no one! Hey, no one! How about a full Abbott and Costello themed team nicknames? Number one is the goalie. Anybody as the forward center, etc. Or no one as the goalie. Anybody as the forward center. Yeah. Who's who's on left wing? What's on center? Yeah, exactly. No lone Monty. Uh, never compliment goalie team to playing football manager. We all got that, right? Exactly. Yeah, never do that. Um, so, uh, okay, that's that's the team. We'll have to do some, uh, our little press meeting and everything like that. Also, um, we'll take a look at the, uh, the team vision, what the club wants us to accomplish, and then we'll actually maybe meet the players. Got our first news article here. Air hire Giacomozzi as a manager. Confirmed appointment of Emma Giacomozzi as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football, the appointment of the 26-year-old, who has recently spent time away from club football to race cars. Maybe that's Emma's background. Maybe she was a foot soccer ball player first, then decided to drive race cars, and then came back. Maybe she had a little bit of an injury. You know, maybe she, you know, uh, tore ligament, ankle, something like that, you know, didn't feel like she could run around, uh, but she really liked the speed. Maybe she was always a really fast uh, person, you know, as a kid uh, and as a teen and everything like that, really fast, gonna be great on the football pitch, slight injury, couldn't run as fast, decided she still liked speed, decided to race cars for a while, but now she's back in the foot soccer ball world. Yeah, she's talented, she can do everything. Um, 
Uh, she is sure to face plenty of questions when she faces the media for the first time. Uh, has put pen to paper a two-year deal worth 1.3 uh, K. These are in pounds per week. Not a bad salary, I gotta say. Uh, Giacomozzi will be managing one of her favorite clubs, and the significance of this appointment will certainly not be lost on either her or the team's supporters. She replaces previous manager Jim Duffy. Sorry, Jim! But... Emma is just going to be just better. Giacomozzi lacks the reputation of a survival specialist, which creates an intriguing dynamic with many pundits expecting them to face a battle to avoid relegation this season. Uh, so we got some air players in the last year of contract. We'll take a look at that. Uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the tactics relatively soon. All right, club vision and expectation meetings. So this is what our board wants us to do. David Smith is our chairperson here. Um, so this is the... Is it the Sink or the Cinch Championship? I mean, it's this is... Um, it, it's clearly the, the sponsor, the like name sponsor of the championship. In fact, I think all the Scot Scottish leagues in here uh, are the cinch something. Uh, I'm assuming it's probably some sort of gambling site or something like that. I don't know. I should have looked it up first, but I was too busy like looking up tactics and things like that to try to figure out what that was. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> 1.3k pounds. It's like 589 kilograms. Oh, car sales. Okay, and it is pronounced cinch. Excellent. Um... So uh, the so we are in the Championship League, which isn't the topmost of the Scottish League. Topmost Scottish League, Premiership. We are in the second tier, uh, the Championship, which is good because a lot of times we've been League One, which is further down. In fact, I think when we were playing the 2017 save, uh, Air United might have been in, in the League One. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, the team history in a second. We'll see the the chart that's come up over there. Um, our crowd cu club culture strive to make progress on and off pitch. Sure, we've got a five-year plan. Uh, we are to work within the wage budget. That seems pretty reasonable. And for this season, the club leaders would like us to simply make sure to avoid relegation. I would love it if we could personally end mid-table. But yes, we are going to try to avoid relegation. Period. Uh, reach the fourth round of the Scottish Cup and be competitive in the premier sports cup which i think mostly just means try not to embarrass yourself um and then by next year they want to be established which means avoiding the relegation battle altogether so here they're fine if we are in the relegation battle um but as long as we don't actually get relegated down that's going to be okay here they would like us to actually avoid the battle completely and then the year after that, they're hoping for a top half finish. Then after that, they're hoping that we reach the championship playoffs. And then maybe eventually, you know, in the future, we can get promoted to Premier League. I don't know. So that's what they're looking for. I think I'm, I'm fine with accepting, expecting, accepting the current vision. Uh, let's just say, yeah, boom, done. Excellent. Um, so that's the vision. Uh, as we advance, there's going to be more. We'll get a prep crop press conference prompt and things uh, because I did agree to that. But before we get there, let's take a look at our squad over here. So, um, oh yeah, I did um, I did grab the uh, the squad profile view, the uh, Work the Space, who's a very, very popular um, foot soccer ball manager player on the Yub Tubs um, uh, from the uh, the workshop. There's a few of these like squad views over here, which just sorts things and gives you a, it gives you a good overview of what's going on. Uh, let's just sort by position over here so we get an idea what we've got. We've got four strikers. We've got Mackenzie Moffitt, Adeloy, and on loan, we've got Afolabi. What is he on loan from? Probably under contract. Ah, on loan from Celtic. It's going to be hard for me to say Celtic as opposed to Celtic, but Celtic is the way the team is actually pronounced, right? We've also got Stephen Bradley over here, who doesn't even have a face. Oh, what a poor guy. He's on loan from uh, Hibernian, uh, which is an Edinburgh, the Scottish Edinburgh team. Um, so those are, our, okay, so sorry, our four strikers are there. Stephen Bradley is theoretically an attacking midfielder. We don't really, I don't know if we're going to use this position. Bradley might not actually get a lot of play over here. Um, and if he gets cranky about it, we might have to release him. We're going to see. We're going to talk about tactics relatively soon. Um, Daryl Connor is going to be kind of interesting. So uh, he's Irish. We got, um, so... As in terms of people we actually have on contract ourselves, most of our players are Scottish, of course. Uh, we do have uh, Tommy Adeloy over here is from Nigeria. Uh, Afolabi is Irish, but on loan. Uh, so Dare O'Connor over here. I mean, if there's ever been a, an Irish name more Irish than this, I don't know. That's pretty Irish. Um, so he's from Ireland. Um, and again, might suffer a little bit in terms of where we can assign him just because we're not really looking uh, to probably to play attacking midfielders over here. Uh, but on the other hand, he's probably going to be a decent uh, right winger here just in the midfield. So we'll take a look. We've got a bunch of discussion to make about our... Um, 
our tactics relatively soon. Um, Michael Hewitt, midfielder, slightly to the right, if possible. Uh, Andy Murdoch. So a lot of these uh, should... Uh, oh, there. There's the age over here. So we actually have a fairly young squad. Uh, most notably, the oldest player we have, I believe... Yeah, I am right about that, is Michael Moffat. Now, he's a very solid striker, but at 36, he's got to be nearing the end of his career. Um, so we are going to be starting Michael Moffat a fair bit, but what I'm really excited about um, for our strikers is actually Mark McKenzie over here, who, while currently is the weakest of our pure strikers. He has incredible potential. He's only 20. Hopefully we can get him to have a lot of skill up. Um, Aflabi's got a lot of potential as well, but he's only on loan. I mean, maybe we can flip it from a loan to a permanent hire, but we might not have the budget for that. We'll see. Um... So as we work our way down, James Maxwell is here on loan and an excellent player. We're definitely going to be making use of him, especially on the left wing. Uh, he can play either in the middle or defensive position. Um, Cameron Sockheld is interesting. He's actually a very, very, very flexible player. Very flexible player. I wouldn't surprise me if we ended up using him uh, as, as one of our long-term strikers over here. He's only 22. He's got huge potential. Um, but he can, he can basically play on the right side. Um, pretty flexibly as well, uh, all the way back to a fullback over here. Uh, so I think Cameron Sackfeld, Sackeld, Salkeld, Salkeld, uh, who's English, but we're going to try not to hold it against him. Uh, we, I think he's probably going to see a lot of play on our squad. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on their, their contract over here to see what else we can get. Um, Chalmers is in an awkward position. When I was going through things, if we take a look at our squad depth report over here for, I just have it set to a 4-4-2, um, there is no position where Chalmers is in the, uh, oh, he is in the top two on the midfield or is over here. Although if we switch it from current ability to potential ability, you can see that he's going to get overshadowed by Patrick Redding here, who is going to be very good. So Chalmers might be a little bit awkward in terms of position, but he's going to be a really good substitute character because he's in a really good uh, position to sub in um, mostly anywhere on the midfield, uh, less so on the right. Um, and then he's a few of these defensive positions, so the left defender over here. So it wouldn't surprise me if Joe wasn't starting very often, but was going to be a regular on our substitute or maybe gets uh, sort of cycled in as uh, if people need a rest or something like that. I don't know. Eight finishing. I don't know who had the eight finishing that people are responding to. These are all real players. Yeah, this is theoretically for whatever timestamp this database was generated at. This is the actual Air United squad. Um, and then throughout the year, they will um, they will release updates to the game, which will update the squad to the uh, the current version. Actually, when you start the game, you can choose which database to play on. Because, like, you could, it could be the latest version, or you could be like, well, no, let me use the players that existed at the beginning of the season, as opposed to the mid-season situation. Uh, so Patrick Redding, I was just talking about, um, he's got good potential, and he's going to be great on the left wing. He is wanted. Chalmers and Redding are both wanted by their teams. We, depending on our financial situation, may have to let them go fairly early, um, you know, if we can get a really good offer. On the other hand, currently... Um, I mean, I think they're going to get some use and Patrick Redding is going to be, I, I, based on some stats I was looking at, I think he's going to be quite good on the left there. Maybe a little less flexible. Chalmers is so, so useful. Michael Miller is one of our players that is currently away on loan. Um, I don't know if this is someone that we're really that keen on keeping around. He doesn't have that much potential. Uh, likely we can't get much money, um, from transferring him anyway, from selling him off anyway. So I don't know what the deal with him is going to be. Uh, he's someone I'm a little less excited about. Uh, so if we can if we can get him off, get him away somewhere, or just it's pronounced reading, not reading, or reading. Is it reading? Patrick Redding, maybe. English is dumb. Get some consistent pronunciations, please. Uh, Jordan Houston, or maybe it's Houston, could be. Is someone else with massive, massive potential at 21. Jack Baird. Same thing. So we've, you can see there's a lot of people with this sort of four-star potential that are currently sitting around three right now. I mean, three is perfectly fine for our league. Good reading for the senior team, but, you know, could eventually become quite a strong member of it. Uh, but again, we may have to get rid of him. Uh, we've got one Norwegian on team, Marcus Fjotov. No idea. No idea over here. Um, is he the super tall one? Yeah, 196, 196 centimeters. Someone in chat can convert that to uh, feet and inches, I'm sure. Uh, he is tall. Now, his heading skill is a 12, which isn't bad for our league. A, a double digit point in something is pretty decent for our league. Uh, you know, and so here, 14 jumping reach is pretty good. Of course, he's got so much height, he doesn't really have to jump very high. Six, seven, there you go. Um, Oh, it's like an uh, right. So he's uh, Furtoft. 
for toft. Anyway, we'll, we'll uh, Marky Marky F over here. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if he had better heading. It's not terrible, but it would be much nicer if he had more. Uh, he is probably the person we're going to target the most often for like uh, corner kicks and things like that, uh, just because he's got a giant head that is far ahead above everyone else. Um, he's only got the three finishing, and I think for headers, I'm not sure. Like, I think a high heading means he will get his head on it, but I think he still needs finishing to actually score with the headers. So I, we'll, we're going to see what we can do with this guy over here. We've got another Irishman over here, Sean McGinty, um, who very, very sort of middling. I mean, he's he's 27 years old. He's reached his potential ability, uh, so we'll see. He doesn't have a lot of flexibility position. I don't think he's going to be someone we're um, long-term looking to rely on. Uh, and then finally, Nick McAllister, who's going to be playing probably on the right-hand side over here and is certainly not too bad. I mean, he's not, you know, he's not he's not short either, although lacking the finishing and lacking the heading skill as much too. So it'll be interesting to see what our set pieces look like once we start shaping that out. We had our two goalkeepers. Now we do have, uh, so we've got Charlie Albinson, our backup uh, goalkeeper. He's going to be fine. But I have to say, our, our primary goalkeeper, Aiden McAdams over here, He's great. He's very good. He's three and a half stars now, four and a half stars potential. Um, I think he's going to look very, 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 very good. We're going to be very happy. Uh, so I think defensively, we've got a nice little edge over here. So fingers crossed that that helps out. And yeah, we do have a lot of tall players. I don't know if there's a version of this. What are physical attributes? Yeah, I don't know if there's a, a preset one of these that... Um, that d displays their height. I mean, I could add in a height column just to see, but we oh, we do have a fairly tall team, which is nice to see. General Info's got their height. Ah, it does. There you go. So yeah, tallest one is Dane. Charlie Albinson is very tall, but that goalkeeper, so obviously he's not going to be... Well, I think technically it's possible to have your goalkeepers part of your set piece stuff, but not really. Um, Sean McGinty, I guess, at 191, um, that is going to be a thing. Again, he's the one who's like just the three stars all around, so not stupendous, but at least he is tall. Um, Michael Hewitt, so he's midfielder, 189. 10 heading, 5 finishing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's going to be doing our... Um, who's really going to be the linchpin of our set pieces. Mmm. Let's take a look at our tactics and have a bit of a discussion over there. So one of the things when you're playing a, a lower or mid-tier team, which is what we're looking at here with Air United, right? We're not in the Premiership. Um, so, And even if we were in the Scottish Premiership, that's not the same level as, as the Premiership in other countries, right? We've got a smaller population, um, less money, that sort of thing. Uh, so... Um, but especially here in the championship series, we're definitely, definitely midfield in terms of, of skill and mental stats. And especially with the mental stats, the players might have a harder time, uh, adjusting to very complex strategies. Um, you know, based on the way the engine was in football manager 21, a gag and press was probably going to work regardless in FM 22. Apparently the gang press has been nerfed slightly. Um, and so you might not be able to just make more aggressive and more fluid gameplay just sort of translate. So I was thinking what we might do is we might really base ourselves around a classic, very British 442 configuration. Um, we are predicted to come in eighth currently in the championship league so we are not even even within the league where we are we are considered to be underdogs so we want something that is relatively defensively minded so in terms of an overall formation structure i was thinking 442 and in particular i was thinking we might base ourselves around sort of like a direct counter attack or kind of kind of vibe here so with the counter attack setup um you do sit a little further back which is better for defense it does it does give the opposition more room to play in sometimes with a very defensive structure structure you'll have like a back five but then you'll sit further up so it's kind of defensive but you're still kind of tr trying to restrict where people sit um i think we'll get we might accept the default here of lower defensive line i think i might cancel the get stuck in um just because i don't trust that our players are necessarily super good at tackling enough to um a risk 
doing an aggressive tackle, which could leave them on the ground out of position, which could draw extra fouls and penalties, uh, and may also cause more injuries. So I was thinking we drop the get stuck in, which will lower the intensity of the uh, the tactic ever so slightly. I thought that might be a good idea. It's a very low la line of engagement. We might we might move it on. I mean, it's just a little bit lower than normal. Or yeah, oh, the line of engagement is lower. I suppose what we could do is we could make the engagement standard but keep the line of defense a little bit lower, which actually might be better for a direct counterattack. The idea is then our, um, our our forwards will sit further forward, and then we're going to do more long bombs, that sort of thing. Do a 10-0-0. Excellent. I like that. Um, and, I mean, the problem with the tactic stuff is if we've got... So we've got 1,000 people in chat right now, which means we'll get 2,000 different opinions about what formation uh, we should use. So we're going to start with this. I think the cautious mentality as a default is good. What we'll probably do is use a base tactic and then make a copy of it um, with some slight variation, especially if we're going into um, tournaments and we're going to be playing against, um, you know, the first couple of rounds, maybe against very, very weak teams, then we might use a more aggressive setup or something like that. Uh, but we're still going to base it on this and try to get some familiarity with this as quick as possible uh so yeah um force opposition outside where's that oh right over here yeah try to yeah force them right to the edge of the thing as opposed to you know keep them within the middle that's the default sure basically you know keep them away from the, the goal you can see this darker area oops Oh, I didn't realize just right-clicking would change that. The dark area is where we're going to keep the opponent out of, you know, and away from the net. Um, when we're in transition over here, this is uh, um, when we were on def when we were on defense and we get the ball, what happens? We're going to try to distribute the ball quickly and counter quickly. So it's going to be about very rapidly. You know, we don't just hold the ball back and look around and, you know, let the opponent react. We're going to try to counter very, very quickly and hope that um, our opposition have overextended themselves. Um, and then we can just do something. Holy crap! Speed Deet! Thank you very much! Wow. Thank you. Hey, Quill! Hope you had a great New Year's. Love what you do and hope you keep making the awesome vids. My Steam catalog just keeps growing thanks to you. Uh, yeah, Guilty. Thank you very much, Speed. That is extremely generous. Thank you so much. Hopefully, uh, uh, a little while ago, um, Football Manager, maybe not 22, maybe the last version, maybe 21, was free on Epic Games. Uh, I know people have issues with the Epic Games store for lots of reasons. Sure. Okay, maybe. Um, but it is worth checking every week for those free games, though, and you can pick up some nice ones, which is nice. But yeah, thank you very much. Sure says, I don't know how the game works, but if you pull your defense back and your forwards high up, would that make your forwards on permanent offside? Um, well, no, they they still they they still won't go beyond the line. No, um, but they're not going to pull themselves back as much, so they will poke a little bit. Well, we'll try. We'll see what this does, and we'll we'll get a vibe for it. If we're pulling a lot of offsides, maybe we won't pull our engagement so far forward. But ultimately, they're going to have to react to the defend the the opposition defender's back line, um, uh, and and you know to avoid the offside. So yeah, we'll distribute quickly, go into counter like immediately. And then when we're in possession, we're gonna try um, more direct passing over here. Um, so, which means like, we're gonna send the ball further forward. We're gonna have to see how good we are at passing to see if that's really gonna work out. Um, if our passing skills are really weak, we may have to go to not a direct counter attack style. We might have to go to just a more um, a slightly slower pace development and shorter passes and, and running the ball forward a little bit more rather than just dumping it down. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the play for set piece is on by default, which is interesting. So it's going to try to generate corner kicks and things, which we'll leave it on for default and see how that goes. It is set to higher tempo over here. Again, the idea is when we're, in, when we're attacking, we are going to go for high tempo. Pass it fast, run fast. Don't try to just, you know, do the thing where we sit back and form a little triangle and passing back and forth and, and try to find an opening. Sure, that's still going to happen uh, as well, but they'll take a little bit more risk. We may have to pull back on that if the intensity is a bit much for our team. We'll have to see how tired we get over the, the course of things, um, but uh, we'll leave this on for now, and I think that's going to be okay. So we haven't really changed the, the customer some direct counterattack too much other than we did stretch out our um, our line of engagement a little bit here on the defense uh, which might make us a little bit more vulnerable might give our position too much space but we'll just have to see how that goes uh, along the way time wasting sometimes gonna have that slider in real life I feel like put mine to the maximum <laughs> Ragnar uh, can you set the rate of faking injuries mm-hmm one of the things in this game I gotta say uh, there are a lot fewer people falling onto the ground than in a real life foot soccer ball um, yeah, 
Definitely. Although when I went to, uh, when I w watched Air United Live, I didn't find that to be as much. I think that might be a little bit more common in um, the uh, the international games for whatever reason. I don't know why, but uh, that seems to be the case. Bum, 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 bum. Hopefully we can moneyball our way to the top. Yeah, we'll see. So um, the, when... Uh, Oh, actually, okay, so when you just, uh, all I did is I initially set up a blank 442, um, and it sets particular variations over here. If we were to go create a new tactic and click direct counterattack from here and then choose 442, it is going to be slightly different. You can see there's a slight variation in what it assigns the um, the positions to. There, it's basically the same. Uh, uh, from the default, but it is slightly different. We may, in fact, work on this one. So the variations you can see over on the left, instead of running a winger, it calls it a wide midfielder. Um, yeah, the winger, uh, which we still have a winger on the right. Um, the winger is going to be moving the ball further forward on its own, right? Dribble more, run with ball wide, stay wider, try to get those crosses in. Uh, and, you know, that sounds pretty good. We might invert these two depending on um, what players we can have playing on each wing and the kind of vibe they can go for over there. And then uh, the other change that happens when you use this particular template, it changes one of the two strikers from a deep lying forward to a pressing forward. Um so the pressing forward, yeah, takes fewer risks, shoot less often, holds up. Puzzle. So this is a little bit more of um. So the close down more, tackle harder. He's more. This is more of a defensive forward, which I think might have been what it was called in previous versions. I don't remember. Um, and then yeah, uh, holds up ball. So he's gonna take the ball and not do as many things with it. I'm not sure if that's what we want, as opposed to the deep lying forward, which takes more risks, still holds up the ball but takes more risk, moves into channels, is going to try to get things done. Either either one, they're going to have the attacking uh, forward, so we're going to see how that goes. Uh, yes, uh, Ramon is probably exactly what's going to happen. Two tactics, a win and a don't lose one. Right now, we're going to focus on the don't lose one because in our regular league play, we are generally going to be the underdog, so we're going to default to a don't lose, and then we'll probably have a variant for probably more like cup matches where we're against lower-rated teams, but that's not going to happen very often. So the don't lose comp is going to be more... More. Con what the hell's going on today? What the what? Forgot to send this during the holidays. Wolfhound Lewis, thank you very much. Forgot to send this during the holidays, but happy holidays and happy new year, Quill. Here's a contribution to the Keep Quill Streaming Fund. Appreciate the entertainment during the week uh, when life gets a little overwhelming. Thank you so much, Wolfhound. Jeez. Holy cow. Thank you. Wow. Um, wasn't there three subtypes of the, you mean these subtypes here? Defense, support, attack? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, it does default to a defensive pressing forward. You're right. Which, but even the, uh, even the attack version still closes down more tackle harder. I guess the difference is it wouldn't hold up as much and it would do the move in the channel. So we could put an attacking pressing forward and that, that is true. Whew. Wow. 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 Uh, CJK has a great point where is your team strength in the moment you should build your formation around that and that is a, that's an excellent point if we take a look at our players over here if we go back to the uh, this excellent uh, profile view right if we look at our current ability um well the player with theoretically the most ability currently is james maxwell who's going to be playing on that left wing um is, is almost certainly where we're going to be placing him i mean he can play he can play the fullback over here but we'll probably play him on the wing here and how's his, cro his crossing's only an eight maybe we do play him as the fullback or wing back as opposed to a winger. He doesn't have the greatest pace. His acceleration is pretty good, though. But, I mean, a pace of 12 is still good for us. He is short, though. Yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent question. Now, a second to that, our current uh, player with the current best ability is our striker, Michael Moffitt, um, who will probably be taking the attacking forward position. Um, 12 finishing. I mean, we could compare him. Hang on, who are we going to compare him to? If we sort by strikers. Um, yeah, I mean, of our strikers, he's by far the one with the most ability. It'd be interesting to see finishing nine... Finishing seven. And what was McKenzie? 
Finishing 10. So Moffat's got the best finishing right now. And there's a good chance he's going to be best in a lot of the stats over here. Uh, so probably we want him as the actual, like, final score, right? Get the ball to him and hope that he can actually score it. Uh, passing's 11. Off the ball is a 14. First touch. So first touch is your ability to receive passes. It'd be nice if that was sort of golden colored, but at least it's two digits over here. Yeah, so it's hard to say, like, we don't really have a singular all-star to base the team around. Um, I guess the highlight might be James Maxwell, who's currently on loan to us uh, and is going to be very good on the left-hand side. He's currently unhappy. We're going to have to take a look at, at his deal and why he's unhappy and what we can do about it. Um, Contend with overall training, no current concerns. Happiness, okay. This is unhappy. You know, no, we'll have a we'll have a, our team talk and everything like that, and I'm betting things are going to shift pretty quickly, uh, but we'll see. So given that, like, maybe we want to look at the idea that the left wing is where the excitement is going to happen. Um, so, and because that's where Moffat, or not Moffat, um, Maxwell is going to be. He's going to be on the left. And so this is going to be maybe the, the place where the action is going to happen. The idea where he's going to move forward and maybe... He's not great at necessarily crossing, right? But he could still at least pass to the center. Left wing's always more exciting. Right wing have no sense of humor. Oh, Ragnar! Oh, that's funny. Um, so if we just start assigning, right? Our attacking forward... Currently, figures Moffat's our best pick. I think that's probably going to be fine. Um, the, I, I, I kind of like the idea of a pressing forward. I guess the question then, it's interesting. It considers Afalabi to be better. Uh, well, he is better right now. I do really want to get Mark McKenzie a bunch of experience because he's got a ton of potential. So I want to make sure he gets plenty of play time. Um, Afalabi over here. How's your tackling? Three. See, and the pressing forward really does try to go for those tackles. It's interesting. It's considered pressing forward defensive to be his best thing, even though, like, you kind of harass a little bit, right, with the pressing forward, but it doesn't actually highlight any of those as key. Huh. First touch of eight. Passing nine. Yeah, I don't know. Again, pressing forward. Close down more, tackle harder, but... Scott Keld's got tons of flexibility. What's he looking like? He's got a tackling of 10. Like, he actually would potentially turn things around more, but, you know. Well, tell you what, for now, let's just put everyone who's got the highest rated stuff in the position. So on the left here, it's definitely going to be James Maxwell. And then, yeah, it becomes very interesting. Um, if we put him in this position, it figures he's best as a, as a just uh, a winger winger, as opposed to a wide midfielder, which I'd kind of be inclined to, to accept. Right, cross more often. I mean, I don't know how often the use of the cross is going to be, but it is going to encourage him to dribble more and run with the ball, which he is going to be quite good at. Um, the attack could make him go even further forward. I don't know if we have to actually go quite that far. I think we will set him to a winger. That's going to be okay. Center mid midfielder, currently Andrew Mur Murdoch's our best pick for that. Our ball-winning midfielder, he's, that's someone who really does need to tackle the shit out of people. Um, I think I think Murhead's closer here. I think Murdoch was better as a pure center midfielder with Murhead being a good pick over there. Uh, and then the right wing, uh, Jordan Houston or Houston over here. Uh, and then there's Dare O'Connor, both of which seem to be pretty well rated over here. We might do a swap around. What about the right hand side over here? Yeah, there you go. Houston is going to be more comfortable as the fullback. So then we'll go ahead and put um, Dare O'Connor over here on the right wing, which is going to be fine. Take a look at the left fullback. Maxwell will be our best person over there, but Chalmers about as good, right? Because Maxwell's only three and a half stars in this position. Chalmers not going to be too bad. On the other hand, Patrick Redding here is the one who I thought was going to have massive, massive potential overall for us long term. So I would like for him to get as much gameplay experience as possible. Our center backs, Baird and uh, Muirhead maybe, but we'll go ahead and grab uh, the, the Dane here. Uh, Marky F as our other uh, central defender. And, oh, goalkeeper, uh, Aiden McAdams is going to be good. So it is interesting. As soon as we put McAdams in, it forms a bond here. I guess it waits till everyone is done. But Murdoch and Muirhead uh, clearly have some experience together. Uh, I guess it's because they both start with an M and a U. We got, the, we got the Muse in the middle over here. Seems okay. Oh, he's Norwegian, not Danish. Sorry. I, I said it right before. I said it wrong here. Wrong, uh, wrong Scandinavian. Wrong over here. Did Motorsport Manager finish? Yes, we have completed it. 
So yes, we've got Norse, the Norse defense. So that's sort of what we're going to look like over here. Um, and I think that's fine. I don't think there's anything that screams out a change, especially until we get a little bit of uh, a bit of gameplay under a belt. We'll see how it is. They've got some familiarity, as I would expect, from the single most common um, game or um, uh, single most common formation in foot soccer ball, at least when we're talking about Britain over here. Um, we don't have a lot of familiarity with the marking that we'd be doing over here. That's the biggest shortfall. Uh, the tempo is not great either. Uh, so those might be two areas that we can practice the most uh, in our preseason training. So um, what I might do here is I might just save this. Um, I don't know, as like T1 just for the setup. If we did a quick pick, it's very likely it would end up with something fairly similar like that. But we'll start with something like this. Uh, let's take a look at our training, which I did muck around with a little bit. So we actually have two matches this week. Um, in uh, are, This is us? Yeah, we're on the 28th right now. So tomorrow we're going to be playing friendly against the Brewer Rangers, who are... Highland Leagues, so they're a very low-tier team. We should be able to crush them, hopefully. Um, and then we're going to play a, a intramural match over here um, against ourselves, right? The second 11. So we're going to play a little bit like that. Likely we'll have to pad our numbers with our youth team, which we haven't looked at yet. Um, and the default training is actually pretty pretty basic. It tends to only schedule a couple of things uh, per day and then a rest, which we might need because our endurance isn't that good. And generally speaking, the day, like... Um, the day before and after a match, they have one thing, maybe, if that. Uh, so I'm throwing in a little bit more training here as well as um, on the next week as well. Hopefully it'll work out. I did make a couple of tweaks over here to our resting rules. Uh, if someone is fully rested, full conditions, they'll train at double intensity. And uh, by default, it's normal intensity. And by default over here, when they're only fair condition, they work at normal intensity. But I'm going to do it at half over there for a little bit more recovery. Hopefully, we won't get too many injuries. When I loaded up this page, uh, sorry, not this page. I think this one over here, it said something like, we expect 48 injuries over the course of the season. I'm like, that sounds like a lot. Oh, shit. I'm on the wrong tactic. Thank you. Um, no. Oh, this yeah, this is the custom one, but the custom one isn't very... It's about the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and this is okay. The only thing we changed is the line of engagement on the, uh, the custom one. There we go. So I actually want to go and blow this one up because I like the pressing forward as opposed to the default. So I actually... There we go. I actually want to be on this one over here as opposed to the custom because they're, they're effectively the same, right? Cause it's a four, four, two. And I picked the direct counter attack over here. The only thing that the setup over here did is do the pressing forward, the ball winning midfielder. Um, and it did have the, the wide, whatever it was called wide midfielder, but we switched it back to winger, which is actually closer to the, the first four, four, two we saw. So uh, this is what I'm happy with. I think I like the idea of trying the pressing forward. We'll see. Oh, the get stuck in. Thank you. Yes. I do want to cancel that. Thank you very much. That's going to be good. Now, the one thing that I could do, especially since my team currently isn't super comfortable with the tempo, is I could go to the normal tempo over here, the standard tempo, which the team is more familiar with and it lowers intensity. And that actually might be a good idea, especially early on here in an effort to reduce some of the injuries. And maybe we'll go regular tempo. Oh, it's sent to Sweeper Keeper. That is interesting. Because when you look at McAdams, it actually does consider Sweeper Keeper to be his best thing. Now, the Sweeper Keeper will moves out more, right? He's a little bit more aggressive and forward. Brings for own two roles. Those are standard goalkeeper and the outfield sweeper. Long standard goalkeeping duties will sweep up balls in front and wide of the penalty area, initiate counterattack and moves direct. I think I kind of like the idea. I think I was always, because I, when I looked at McAdams before I started the stream, I was like, eh, he's pretty good there. And that is the default. Let's try it. Good defenders around him. Maybe sweeper is better. Oh. Yeah, the team cohesion is a good idea. I did throw uh, not so much in this first week because it was pretty limited. Um, although I did add attacking corners. Maybe I should throw the uh, team cohesion in here. Uh, a little. Oh, I have some team bonding. Team bonding over here. We can also get a little bit more of a cohesion uh, boost if we do community outreach. So maybe I'll do that just to start building up the the team stuff. And it actually lowers the intensity of the day a little bit. The community outreach isn't like isn't very physically demanding. But yeah, if we look at um if we look at the next week 
Uh, so yeah, this is this week. Next week, we also have two matches. Falkirk's a friendly. I think East Kilbride might be a real match. We're going to check. But I added community outreach and team bonding over here. Community outreach and team bonding. You can only do one of each per week. Trying to build up the uh, the cohesion. Because right now, the dynamics of the team um, are not fantastic. Team cohesion is very poor. They're not... Um, yeah. They're not really feeling it. They're not really friends. So we're going to try to build that up. Because right now, it, it's not great. Which is unfortunate. Personally, I blame the English. Sorry, I'm just trying to fit into Scotland and Scottish culture. Uh, except I'd say it with an Italian accent. Personally, I blame the English. I think I just offended three different countries simultaneously. Uh, but I gotta say, one thing about British humor, they really do like to bash on other countries a lot. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but Brits really like to trash other countries. I think it's their uh, their imperialism streak still in there. Anywho, um, let's go. Uh, I can, we can probably just advance time here. Let's take a look. Squad, we did that. Dynamics, I don't think there's much we can do. I mean, we'll, there'll be a team meeting prompted automatically soon. I don't feel the need to do it manually. Um, oh, right. We don't currently have a data analyst. And that might be a useful thing for us to have, because one of the things that uh, seems like a good thing to do with our training is after a match... We could do match reviews afterwards. You know, what went well, what went wrong. And we can't do that right now because we don't have a data analyst. On the other hand, we also don't have much in the way of money. But that's something to consider. Uh, I also want to take a look at the coaches, actually, for the training over here. Um, edit coaching assignments. And if we ask assignment to assign... Okay, that's going to be there. So what are we doing? We're working on tactical and technical. So... Tech possession. Interesting that we're not doing both of these. Which I can add in. Because if you add more jobs, the star rating in different places will, will start to drop. This is what my assistant is assigning. Yeah, okay. David... White can't really do too much. If we do this and we do tactical, we'll actually do better. I mean, we will have the heavy coaching workload. It seems better to me. Do we have a fitness coach? We're using John Joyce and ourselves for fitness. Do we not actually have... Hang on a sec. Three coaches, assistant general, goalkeeping, fitness. Well, those are four categories. Um, If we're going to spend some money on some coaching staff, rather than going for a performance analyst, a dedicated fitness coach would probably be the best thing we could do. Yeah. I think that's what we want to do. I had uh, started looking for a performance analyst, and we might still hire one, but... I think what we want to do an overall fitness coach. As I say, 15 in everything. Oh, there is one person who's got a 15 in every category. Anthony Colbert, who's on a free. I wonder if he's willing to join us. He wants 2.3k per week. The most we're allowed to pay him is 350. So there's no way he's going to be willing to do that. So let's just lower our expectations. Show me coaches that have at least an 11 and everything. All right. We've got a few options over there. So not Colbert. Um, we'll sort by fitness, which is Colbert. Stuart Balmer might be the second best pick then. Oh, the preferred job. None of them want to be a fitness coach, unfortunately. Full-time. I guess just coach is the category. Okay. Immediate. 
Two year contract's probably fine. Let's offer him three two seventy five a week. Let's go over three hundred. All right, three twenty five. That's fine. I'm into fitness. Fitness is pizza in my mouth. <laughs> Swan me. Fitness pizza in my mouth. All right. So Stuart Bomber, we're going to hire you and you're going to be our fitness coach. All right. Other than that, I think we can go forward. Medical, yes. Schedule, so yeah. We've got four friendlies and then yeah, East Kill Bride is our first actual map match in the Premier Sport Cup Group F. Now these guys are, yeah, semi-professional lowland team. So they should be an easy match. We'll see. And then we got another friendly after that, which is interesting. We do want as many friendly as possible. Um, so that'll be okay. I think um, in other leagues, you might not have a cup sort of this early, so you can fit more regular friendlies in, but we'll be treating this this cup here almost as more of a more of a warm up. Um, scouting induction. Okay, we can skip this. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll assign those. I've got everything set to manual right now. Um, and then, yeah, we've got a few cards from people. We're going to be taking a look at some of the scouting information later. Wow, you are really good. Danny Divine. Sign him at whatever the price. Yeah, well, is he a free? No. Is that Inverness? He would be very good, though. Holy crap. Okay, we'll just keep these guys in mind. Transfers, uh-huh. Um, rivalries are, yeah, versus Kilmarnock, which is basically right next door to where we are. Club Vision we saw before, finances. How are our finances? Well, we've got, you know, some budget sitting around. Um, we are using most of our wage budget. We do have room for a little bit more. We are going to spend some of it on that new coach. Um, so really, we're only, we only got about 500 pounds a week to spare after hiring that new coach. So that's not very much. Development center. Oh, I did want to look at the um, the history of the club here. You can see. So this is the Champion League, and that's League One. So you can see that um, between uh, from 2013 until 2016, we're in League One. Got promoted to the Championship. Got relegated. Got promoted. Actually had two really good years. Coming in fourth back-to-back. -back. Um, and... This is, uh, is this what came in last year? Yeah, last year we came in eighth. So hopefully we can do better than that this time around. All right, I'm going to start advancing term. Coach wage is not including wage budget for transfers. Okay, cool. Good to know. So we have a little bit more room for transfers in there. Let's just move forward for now. Um, set up a social feed. That's great. Training schedule changed. Oh, you had to change it because of the fixtures. Well, we'll take another look at that soon. All right, weekly staff meeting. We'll attend the meeting over here. We might not attend it every single week. We'll see. So Dave Timmons, our assistant manager, believes that Aaron Muirhead would make a much better captain than Sean McGinty due to having been to the club longer. But it's worth noting, change the captaincy could potentially have negative effects. So we could change the captain. We'd want to really talk to uh, to Sean McGinty first to let him know that we might be kicking him out. Um, leadership, teamwork. So McGinty has better leadership, but less teamwork. I don't know if I'm going to make the change right now. Um, remind me in a couple weeks. We'll consider. Uh, oh, yes, individual training. Yeah, let me let me move on. We're going to set up some individual training. Don't worry about that. Um, and then, oh, these are specific training changes to do. Uh, keep uh, Albinson uh, off his weaker foot. No, let's, let's, um, remind me next week. We're going to come back to a bunch of these. These are coaching assignments for the other teens. I will accept that because I'm going to be a little less interactive. Same thing here. Change some of the assignments for the under 18 stuff. That's going to be okay. Uh, I'm going to move on to some of this training stuff. We'll come back. Player to transfer list. You should think that Patrick Redding should be placed on the transfer list. He appears unwilling to renew his contract with us. Oh! Really? Uh, 
I mean, he's contracted until next year. Standard quickness choking. Yeah, well, let's, um... Let's move on from that for now. Alright. Will this keep cycling forever? Can I just end the meeting whenever I want? These are new coaches. We're going to skip those. Scouting, yeah. I don't want to hire on more staff right now. I'll find my own damn staff. We could use a head of sports science. Don't we already have a head physio? I thought we did. There, we'll end that meeting. That's going to be okay. All right. Done. So we're going to do our first friendly. It's 3 o'clock. We'll definitely have enough time for the match. We're going to have to check the sound levels once we get in there. Because if I remember correctly... Oh, the game's muted right now. Um, when you go into a match for the first time, the sound is like stupid loud. I knew there was a bottom right for like the end meeting, but I did want to see like as much as possible here. Um, so this is social feed. That's what we're following. That's fine. Code of conduct. I, I'm going to say this is this is okay for these punishments. Maybe maybe we'll change these later. I don't know. If you skip it, you'll have the opportunity to spend. No, no. We'll just we'll just confirm this default. Sure. If some of the players are bad. All right. Match preparation, a little bit of familiarity. Squeen squad dynamics induction, that's fine. So Moffat and Muirhead currently leaders. McGinty being influential. McGinty being their captain as well. Injury update. So what's amazing here is we have no injuries. Every single football manager that I've ever played, every year, we have a bunch of injuries. Including like injuries where someone's going to be out for the next eight months. So this is amazing that it's not the case. Oh, uh, yeah, we got to introduce ourselves to the squad. Let's do it. Another pointless meeting, just like in real life. This could have been an email! But this is going to be pretty important. So this is us introducing ourselves to the team. Um, we can say either, I know that many of you may not have heard of me, so I wanted to personally introduce myself as a new Air United, or the Air Manager, or I'd like to introduce myself as your new manager and answer any questions that you may have. I don't know if this one here feels a little bit warmer. Uh, so everyone seems agreeable. McGinty says, I look forward to working with a lesser known manager who can bring new ideas, uh, into the site. Sounds like it may have been a little bit of, um, backhanded compliment, maybe. I don't know. I guess, I mean, that, that's the technical term. There's, uh, in a TV show, there's someone that like made up a term for like a in, in, insultument. Something like that. Yeah, fire him! Um, yeah, it's true, I am lesser known. I mean, in the foot soccer ball world. So, I could be neutral, or we could promise. Uh, I could promise to improve goalkeeping, improvements to defense, midfield, improve the quality of strikers. I'm going to trim the size of the squad. I don't know if I want to do that with this. I'll be giving opportunities to more younger players this season. I mean, that's the idea. I don't, want to, I don't think I want to make any promises right now, though. I think that seems like a bad idea. But to be fair, if any of you want to move on and good enough offer is made where we won't stand in your way as a club... No, won't sugarcoat it. We need to sell players. Uh, so I don't want to make any promises now. I do want to talk about our expectations for this season. Done. Okay, encouraged, slightly positive, happy about that. Let's talk about our targets. So, uh, I don't think we're good enough to finish top half. No matter how good of a talker I'm going to be, I don't think anyone's going to believe that bullshit. I would like to finish mid-table, but we're definitely going to we're definitely going to avoid relegation. Um, that should be our aim. Avoid regulation, even though it means taking part in regulation playoffs. Mm. Give it everything we got to try to avoid relegation. At least we can have no regrets whatever happens. So it feels to me like this one here is implying that I don't even think we're going to hit the relegation playoffs, which is really my goal over here. Um, our, our, our expectations from our club is simply that we don't get relegated. But I don't even want to go with the playoffs. So I'm going to go with this. I haven't watched Ted Lasso yet. I really want to. But it's like an iTunes or Apple TV exclusive, right? Um, unless something have changed at this point. I'm thinking about getting like a one-month subscription just so I could watch the damn thing because it looks amazing. So yeah, we're, we're going to avoid relegation. Oh, everyone's played with that. Everyone's, we can stay up. Yes, good. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the sort of reaction I was after. I could fist pump for it. You know, intended to encourage. It's exactly the sort of reaction I was after. Um, I just want to be in later stage of the Scottish Cup. Well, let's get a good account of ourselves in the Scottish Cup. Our club only expects us to hit round four. Sounds good to me. Excellent. All right. That's what I was looking for. We'll also finalized the code of conduct. Suggested uh, this season. Trust you all accepting the rules. 
encouraged, nice. Uh, that looks looking fine. None of us are gonna going out there looking to fall foul of the code of conduct anyway. Lovely. I won't be expecting any issues with disciplinary action this season now that that's agreed. Okay. McKinsey stayed neutral, which is unfortunate, and Moffat, our team leader, is reserved. Um, but we've got some people who are encouraged and content. Guess we'll take it. Done. Again, new iPhone comes with one year of Apple TV. Yeah, but I really like my Android stuff. All right, majority of players reacted well. Conversation appears to have positive effect on a lot of players. You can see the morale shoot up on a lot of players. Uh, Tommy Adeloy here is just, like, thrilled. It's like, best team ever. Oh, Michael Moffat didn't improve, but that's because he was already super hyped. He's, like, 100% on board. No problem there. Okay, so that's that's very good. We're going to leave the meeting. We're going to hopefully improve um, more of our... Um, more of the team cohesion through some of the practice. That's going to be okay. We're coming up in our first game here. Team selection. But do we got bits. Hey, Rob, thank you very much. Should be a steam achievement for getting by a team meeting without upsetting the lads. Yeah, we do have a really good traits for this. Um, like we've really min maxed our character a lot. Uh, and our traits are really meant to not have bad things happen there. So, uh, we're going to, um, uh, Yeah, pick unpick position, which mostly means it's going to sign the um, the substitutes, which we have three substitute positions not allocated here. That's going to be okay. We'll get a little warning, like, are you sure? It's like, well, we don't have anyone else unless we bring people in from the youth squad, but that's not going to uh, work. We covered MS traits at the start of the stream, um, but uh, very offensive, her traits. We'll take a look at it after the match here. Um, Captain, oh, I didn't go through the set pieces that I want to arrange. You know what? We'll just go with whatever it assigns for this, but we are going to want to make sure to um, plan some specific set piece plays uh, going forward. But let's go ahead and just submit this for the friendly. Proceed to match. Yes. Okay. Some players are concerned about the uh, lack of tactical familiarity with the formation. Apparently, they've never heard of a 4-4-2 before. It's very alien to them. I don't know. Sure. Um, is there anything here? No. Inform the tactics. That's it. Okay. Go to match. So we don't actually do the uh, we don't actually do the the chit chat over here. All right. Okay. Um. All right. This is friendly. Brora Rangers versus Air United. We do our chances the world of good by always triggering a press when the ball is played to Dale Galepsi. So this is uh, my assistant, um, Dave Timmins here. Uh, always press Dale Galepsi. Sure. Press office. Okay. Good. Excellent. Dressing room. All right. Assistant recommends. Now, we're going to have to take a look at uh, Dave Timmons' stats later. I suspect he might not be the best, and so his things shouldn't be in there. It is true, though. This is a match we should be winning. Uh, make sure to do it. Oh, let's do it without gestures. Okay. Uh, you can still speak directly to the various groups. Uh, attackers, go out there and score lots of goal points. Yeah, go out there and give me a reason to pick you when the season starts. Nothing really happening. No one's really, you know, dominate the midfield. Oh, there we go. That one worked. Uh, need a strong defense. Seems demotivated. God damn it, Patrick. Let's just play some foot soccer ball. Okay. There's been some visual improvements since the last time we played. Uh, let me go into the options here, too. Hold on. Pause a sec. Um, camera director is fine. Extended highlights. Things going to be fine for this. I don't think we need comprehensive. That's going to be okay. Uh, match speed boosted outside of highlights, which is great. I'm going to turn replays off. We can always manually replay. Um, but sometimes, but I, I, I don't like to have the replays on. That's going to be all right. Okay. We got, uh, Marky F over here. Our Norwegian central defender. Uh, he's got the ball from here. I guess Afo won the, uh, Won the initial, or it doesn't win, right? It's coin flipping this. There's no, uh, there's no face off in foot soccer ball, right? Listen, it's been a while since I watched some foot soccer ball. I watched them during the Olympics, but that's about it. <laughs> Is Air Scottish team indeed? Uh, can we spot Quill in the stands? He's the number one fan. That's true. Yeah. Well, no, uh, there's no fans out there because of COVID. Well, okay, it's because it's a friendly, but you know, 
Oh, no, there's some fans there. They just don't want to be in the splash zone, maybe? Why wouldn't anyone be right up against the sides? All right, Houston with the big send forward to Moffitt, who does get actually a, a pretty, like, like on-target shot, uh, but the goalkeeper was right in his face. That probably wasn't a good angle. It does generate the corner, which is pretty good. Who's taking this corner over here? Oh, Patrick Redding is taking in the corner. And one of the things I want to do is I definitely want to change what we do over here. Trying out corner swing. Does get deflected out by McLean here. Kelly picks it up. It looks like your defenders are pretty out of position here. Oh, there is one sitting back. So that's going to be okay. Who's trying to, uh, to bring it down? Muirhead. Muirhead with the tackle. Oh, free kick. Ay ay ay. All right. Now, we can, well, let's change the mentality. We'll go positive here because we should win this one, even though that's not what we've been practicing. But we shall see. Oh, there's some different... Um, Different UI elements here from last time we played. 22 minutes in, no highlights. A little disappointed that we're not being a little bit more dominant, but that's okay. Our goal for this one, no injuries. And get comfortable with the strategies as much as possible. That was a nasty trip. Awful call. Yeah, I can't believe that was a foul. No, that that was... Yeah, that, that seemed pretty legit. I don't think there's, there's not really flopping in this game. So, um, you know, when someone goes down from a foul, it's it's pretty legit. Whoa! Okay, so that was Moffat to Afolabi. Tries to center to Murdoch! Oh! Okay, this Mullen here, this goalkeeper is actually, like, really keeping Brorar into this game. Holy cow. Now, we're going to do a lot of substitutions. In fact, we might just do, like, a big mass halftime substitution. Because our goal is to get every every player a little bit warmed up over here. Uh, the extent of my soccer knowledge is, is that you can't use hands. So, Quill, can you explain 442 in hockey terms? Yes, Candy. So, what's funny, you better not goddamn... Oh my god, the goalkeeper just swings for something that already got deflected and almost just rolled in behind him. Um, the numbers refer to how many people are in the position. So, uh, a regular hockey formation, using soccer terms, would be a 2-3. Red card! Come on! Hang on, I want my hat back. <clears throat> Holy crap! Red card in a friendly! <laughs> Holy shit! Come on! No, all right. Muirhead! God damn it, Aaron! What is... <laughs> Holy shit! <sighs> so to finish the thought, in hockey, uh, it 2-3. What's interesting about hockey is that it is front-loaded. Um, you know, you have three forwards and two defenders. Uh, but in uh, foot soccer ball, it's defense-loaded. So 4-4-2 four, four, is two defenders, or four defenders, four in the midfield, and then two attackers in the front. That's what that is. Um, wow! So we're going to play shorthanded over here. Uh, so that's one of our center um, one of our center midfielders. I think what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to move... Who's number six here? Is it Tooltip S over here? No, of course not. I guess that's Andy Murdoch. So I'm just going to center up Andy Mur Murdoch. And uh, we'll probably have to drop back down to Cautious. All right. And then he's got the free kick. Okay, it curls wide. Throw a water bottle. I don't have a water bottle. I have a can of soda, but I don't want to throw it because it's going to make a mess. <laughs> it's just uh, just sparkling water with a little bit of flavor. No sugar. It's nice. These little boobies. All right, Murdoch, who's all alone in the midfield now, gets to the Maxwell, who does not have a very good first touch there. Almost loses the control of the ball. Passes it into nothing. Luckily, Moffitt, again, our most experienced player by far. 36, he's practically a dinosaur. Centers it up to O'Connor, who kicks it in. Gets it in there. Con oh, D Dare O'Connor. Is it Dare? D-A-I-E-R-E. -E. The problem with Scottish names, or Irish names, is half the time they don't, they're not pronounced anywhere near what they look like. But Dare O'Connor... Gets it in there, shorthanded. Uh, set the team mentality to... No, no, no. What? Do it? I'll sort. Does I'll sort just open up the menu? Yeah, okay. It's like, I'll sort it out. No, no. We've already changed the mentality. Shut... Is this guy's name Pickles? <laughs> oh, my God. We need to hire him. I really want a Pickles on my team. Dara. Dara. Like the comedian. I was, oh my god! Holy shit, that nearly went down. That was Pickles! That was Pickles who almost scored there. Did you see that? Hire Pickles. Hang on, can we like bookmark people here? Can I see the other team from here?
I guess I can check their formation. Pickles. John Pickles. Wow, what a name. He's 27. Let's scout him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Okay. Let's scout John Pickles. He means bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly like Darrell O'Brien. Oh, yeah. O'Brien. O'Brien? O'Brien. There's it's something slightly different about his last name. I'm not saying it right either. What is this? Oh, it's halftime. Can I yell at some goddamn players? I just I mostly just did the one, really. Um ooh, the UI is different. Okay, I guess I hit dressing room over here. Halftime backroom advice. Maxwell acts as if he's used to playing at higher tempo than asked to play today. Alright. We might have to put the tempo a little higher. Um th honestly, this isn't good enough. But I mean throw water bottle! There it is! This isn't good enough. <laughs> It's a friendly, like... I mean, I should be a little disappointed. There, a little hands-on hip. I'm disappointed we have little possession so far. I don't know, enjoy it's just a friendly. I mean, honestly? Alright, I don't want to be too critical. Let's, let's go with the assistant recommendation. Ah, Alright, looks inspired and motivated. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Wait. Highlight speed maybe a click or two faster? Sometimes I do bring the highlights just one tick up. I think we're just going to wait for now because I, as I get my bearings again. Meekings to Gamble. Gamble to McDonald. Sutherland. Could we get possession maybe? Problem is my team's demoralized because we don't have a Pickles on our team. Oh yeah, that's right. I was going to do some subbing. Um, Tactics and sub. Should, should have done at the halftime. Just again, get everyone a little bit warmed up here. Uh, so we'll bring in, we'll bring in one at one time here. So we'll swap in McAllister for Houston. Actually, maybe we'll sub out the ones who are most tired. So Redding over here, who's only playing okay anyway, uh, we'll sub you in for Joe Chalmers. Okay. Get a cucumber and go from there. Oh, they pulled pickles. How could they pull pickles? Every few minutes, we'll do a little bit of swap. Uh, in a friendly, you can sub them all. Yeah. So in a normal game, you get three substitutions, and that's it. I don't know if they've implemented uh, the rules where you get a fourth substitution in extra time in uh, FM22. Because in the Scottish uh, Football League, they added that rule in a year or two ago, I think. There's Darrell O'Connor again. Going wide. Crossing it up. Moffat with the header. In! And Moffat, like, it is, he's going to have to retire soon. He's ancient. Ancient man over here at 36. Says the 42-year-old. Um, but man, oh man, is he is he going to carry us this freaking season? Holy cow. They pulled their pickle. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, who else is next tired? James Maxwell. Uh, there you go. Being confirmed to do, or suggested over there, the assistant, the little symbol. O'Connor? Dara! Oh, deflected wide. But that is going to be a corner, which is good. Ancient man carries kids in kicking game. <laughs> Can we go back to talking about how bad 442 is? The thing is, lower tier teams, etc. Oh my god! Jack Baird with the header. Okay. Let's take a look at that here. We're going to definitely take a look at who scored and how. Like, Baird with the header. Make a note. You know, because this is going to maybe influence our set piece planning. Oh, raise this flag. What's going on? Substitution. Oh, we got some kicks and things. Was it not pausing in the tactic screen by default? I guess it's fine. Um, all right. Andy Murdoch, who's having to solo the center here, is getting a little tired. But honestly, he's probably still our best pick for the center, so we're probably just going to have to sub other people out. Um, let's uh, let's bring in McAllister now. So he's going to he'll sub in for Houston for Houston. Again, we're just we're just slowly trickling people, so they everyone gets a few minutes. <laughs> and read the rules for your league. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Oh, it might, it might explain the uh, fourth sub, yeah. Because, yeah, that was the thing I was going to say. The Scottish leagues, I think, changed the rules, but it wasn't represented in FM21 or 
or maybe Tefan 20, whenever the last time I played a little bit, um, they hadn't actually implemented that rule change. It'll be interesting to see if it's in there. This is preseason, yeah. This is just a friendly. Against a team we should be crushing. And in fairness, we are crushing them now. 3-0, right? It didn't start off at the start, but what, what I'll, I'll, I guess what I often see in these, when you're playing against a team with a differing skill, um, it can be nil-nil for a while, but ultimately the lower tier team has to expend so much more energy just to keep parity that, um, especially once you get into the second half, they just start to tire and... Um, and then, you know, everything goes to shit for them. Mark McKenzie. Let's, uh... There you go. Let's throw you in for Afalabi. And you know what? Adoela will sub you in for Moffat as well. Go, go, go. Both strikers are getting replaced. Again, a little bit of warm-up. I think the rule is now five subs? Really? Like, five subs, period? Interesting. Yeah, we'll definitely have to check the rules. Because for a while, it was three... Like, three sort of the standard in most European foot soccer ball. And then with the fourth, that there's extra time, which I always thought was an excellent idea. As soon as I heard about it, I was like, that does sound good. But it's five overall. Three was in COVID year. Yeah. Okay. MLS lies five subs and three sub events. Okay, so in MLS, you can do... You can substitute players three different times. And presumably... Um, Sometimes you could you pair, like, uh, do a couple at a time. Hmm. EPL's back to three at the moment. All right. Well, yeah, we'll definitely have to check the rules because it's going to be really important for actual strategizing for real gameplay. Again, here in the friendly, we've got unlimited subs, which is going to be nine subs because that's all we've got. And I might not sub the goalkeeper. Because the goalkeepers don't tire as much, generally speaking, you can run the same goalkeeper for the entire season, unless there's an injury. So I'm not too worried about conditioning Charlie here. But uh, Stephen Bradley, who is... Uh, yeah, see, Stephen Bradley's in an awkward position because all he's really comfortable in playing is the attacking midfielder positions we don't use. I guess we can throw him as a central midfielder, but he, we might just cancel his, um, his loan because I don't think he does much for us. We'll sit Andy Murdoch. Um... Daro Connor's done great things for us, but yeah, we'll just finish our last subs over here. Uh, of these two, here, we'll sub out the Norse and confirm. Okay. Is Emma going to be something as player last game of the winning season? I would love that, right? Like in in some of these leagues, you can have people who are uh, player coaches, right? People we've seen that, or I've seen it when I've played some of the really low tier stuff. There are some players who play and are also one of our coaches i don't think we can do that oh mcray with actually a pretty sexy header there that's actually a nice little one two combo it didn't go in but still since he's been set up no shut up we don't have to go very defensive come on assistant manager mm -hmm. won't gender be a problem for that ah you're right that's you know what that's the only reason why air might not dominate is they might not let emma play is um well here's actually an interesting question is this league explicitly men's only as a rule right i mean obviously there are there are women's only leagues um but is this league here explicitly men's only that's how the database works but i don't know if that's the way the rules are mm -hmm. it is because the NHL isn't, for example, isn't explicitly men's only. And there have been uh, occasional, a few female players. I know there was a goalie when I used to watch hockey like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I know in Football Manager, it's, the league is men's only. I just don't know if, like, the Scottish Football League, is it explicitly men's only? <laughs> is there a rule that says specifically that dogs aren't allowed to play? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Was that Air Bud? I've never watched that movie. But that quote is, is a hell of a thing. I gotta say, this this team, they're doing some great stuff. Broar? Broar Rangers, I think. Broar? I don't know. The Bros. They're, they're pretty impressive there. Mm-hmm. Female goal of 15 years ago. Things to watch your mind gets. It was a long time ago, it felt like. 10 years ago? There was definitely one. They only played, I think, a couple of games. I could be completely wrong about the dates. The problem... Oh, Hewitt with the header! Okay. 
Um, the problem with only watching occasionally and not really paying attention too much. Let's see. What good formation to use? Loving my five, two, three wide. Um, when I when back when I was playing the 2017, which is the one I played the most, right? We did our Air United run, but I did a few others as well. Do we have a yellow card as well? Anyway, um, uh, I think that was the engine where you could really abuse multiple strikers. And as a result, I still have it in my head that I, I want I want two strikers at least because it was really weighted to that. I think before, prior to 2017, crossing was overpowered and the nerf crossing, but then like, yeah, multiple strikers was really strong. Some people would play three strikers. I think that's also the time that um, someone developed like the strikerless. Although technically, I think like, I, I remember seeing he was playing like with like three shadow strikers, which were technically attacking midfielders. And it was like all kinds of weird things to break the, the game engine. So I don't know what's super strong these days. I know in tw FM 2020 and 2021, Gagan Press was like super OP. Um, it apparently has been nerfed a little bit here in 22, but it's probably still very good. All right. Well, yeah, we did get a yellow card on McKenzie. Wow. Why so aggro? Well, I think it is actually because of rustiness, right? They're, they're trying to go for a tackle, but they're not doing a very good job of it. Um, that's exactly what I was looking for. Is it though? We got away from that. Doesn't hide. You know, let's not, you know, we'll just do this. All right. Mo mostly inspired and motivated. We'll go for it. It's going to have to be okay. Let's check our rules here. Um, I don't know if there's a shortcut. If we go here, anyway. And rules. Oh, they got a little graphic for the structure. That's interesting. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Seven subs names, maximum three used. There you go. Three substitutions, period. Uh, there, there might be slight differences in some of the tournaments. That's also possible. But yeah, 